Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video like this one. We do daily content on this channel where we talk about different homebrew, how to install different plugins, different emulators and things like that. So I would really appreciate it if you subscribe. Thank you so much and I hope you enjoy this video. Welcome everyone to another video and today we're going to take a look at this new app called Noboru and it's basically a comic book slash manga app reader for your PS Vita and obviously you must be running custom firmware in order for this to work and this supports both online and offline modes meaning you can download some of your favorite comic books and have them in the library and you can go back and read them anytime you want and you don't necessarily need to have internet connection to read the stuff you downloaded and it's a beautiful app very simple very easy to understand uh, great interface so far so good and this one was released on February 3rd of 2020 this year and it was updated on the 4th fixing a bunch of bugs and adding new languages which is great and I wanted to show you before we installed this or show you how to install it that way you have a good understanding of what we got going on here and if you're interested in installing this app on your Vita. And so we have the library here and this is the stuff I saved. This is not downloaded, this is just stuff I want to check out later on. And then we have our catalogs where we have different websites where we can uh, access different books and things like that. And also in different languages, we have Spanish, Russian, uh, here's another one that says different. I don't know what that means. Here's Portuguese. There's French and also Russian. So it's great. Let's check out the first one here. English manga reader and all sorts of different books here, which is great. And it's a very beautiful app. I love it so much. It, it's great to uh, take a look and go through all the different books here. Um, let's go to Attack on Titan, one of my favorites. And as you can see, it's telling me to remove from library. And the touchscreen works just fine on this app. And I did download one issue, or the first book. And all you have to do is click or press on this little icon here, which is the download button. So you can basically just you know, go into any of these books and it will start loading and as you can see on the top we have one of 42 that's 42 pages in this book and the touch screen works absolutely magnificent on this app and you can swipe through different pages like that and go back and forth with them the load times are a little bit long I'm not sure if it's just a bunch of people trying to access the app or if it's my internet connection uh, it probably is my internet connection because I do have a video uploading right now and it's probably causing delay on this app a little bit but yeah you can use your analog or I think the d-pad does not work but it's great and you can go back by pressing O and you can remove library or add to your library by pressing triangle so on and so forth and you have your history all the stuff you looked at before and I did look at infinity gauntlet one of my favorite reads and once you go into one of these uh, websites or sections of the catalog you can press triangle and search one of your favorite books and it should show up but I don't see any of the latest and greatest comic books right now the new releases so uh, I think that's pretty good though the latest I've seen was 2019 last year and 2018 but it has almost every comic book known to man which is crazy so here in the download section it's just going to display all the books you're currently downloading and what the wait time is. Moving on to the settings. And we just have different settings here like uh, 
your reader orientation, your scaling, your change key type, clear library, and your language. So that's basically it. And now moving on to the installation of this app, all we're going to do is download the VPK, transfer it onto our Vita, go to our Vita shell, and install the VPK, and there we go. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to do is open up our Vita shell, and we want to press start. And we want to make sure that the select button is on USB mode. Let's go back and press select. Once that's enabled, we want to connect our USB cable to our PC and go on to our computer and download the VPK. All right, so here is my PS Vita drive, the USB drive H. And I recommend creating a folder called VPK. That way you can install all of your VPKs in here. And it's easier for you to track down when you get back onto your console and it's not as difficult to uh, get these installed and you're not wasting too much time and you're more organized. So let's go to the first link in the description and that'll take you to Vita DB dot, uh, yeah. Anyways, you can download here where it says download VPK. And thank you, Crackery Op, for creating this beautiful app for us. Let's download that. Here is our VPK, and all we have to do is drag it onto our USB drive. And I can just throw it into the VPK folder here. There we go. Now we can go back onto our console and finish the installation there. Moving on to our Vita shell, and you want to find that VPK. For me, it's going to be the UXO folder because I have everything installed on my SD card via SD2 Vita adapter and let's select that folder find the VPK folder and there is our noboru.vpk file and we want to install the package for me it's going to be O because this is a Japanese uh, version Vita and so the X and O are swapped out. And if you're interested on how I have this custom theme for my Vita shell, I do have a video on how to do that. And that will be in the description down below. Now we can go back to our home. And you should now see a new app called Noboru. Let's open that up. Okay. And I'm running off 3.73 with H on Core 2, and it's working just fine. If you're interested in upgrading your firmware and hacking it, I do have a video on how to do that, and I'll leave that link in the description below as well. So that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. And if you have any questions, as always, comment down below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video like this one. Take care guys and I'll see you on the next one.